quantum computers are years, not decades away. That's the take-home message from Microsoft's recent press release about their new quantum processor, the Majorana 1. But is it legit? Let's take a look. There are plenty of different approaches to make a quantum computer. IBM and Google favor superconducting qubits. IonQ and Quantinuum use trapped ions. Intel uses spin qubits, and Pascal uses neutral atoms. But these are not the only possible ways to make a quantum computer. Think of it like vacuum tubes and transistors. Both of these are ways to make a classical computer. It just turns out that transistors are way better, so that's what we use now. Quantum computers, however, don't yet have a clear winner. All of these technologies have benefits and drawbacks, making the playing field relatively even. This is where Microsoft comes in. Microsoft is currently working on a quantum computing platform that is completely different from any other type of quantum computer, and they're doing it based on a particle that hasn't been proven to exist yet, the Majorana fermion. To understand what this is, we need to get through a bunch of background information, so I'm going to speed run the quantum computing necessary to know what's going on here. First, quantum computers are made of qubits, or quantum bits. These are systems, like electrons orbiting atoms, which obey the laws of quantum mechanics, meaning that they have discrete energy levels. The system can be in the ground state, the first excited state, the second excited state, etc., but not in between. We can pick two of these states, usually the two lowest in energy, call the lower one zero, the higher one one, and then call that total a qubit. The qubits can be put into a superposition of the two basis states, meaning the ones that we labeled zero and one, in which there is some part zero and some part one. Once we measure the superposition, however, the state collapses into a single value, either zero or one. Really then, you can turn almost any quantum system into a qubit. It may not be a good qubit, but in principle at least, you can do it with most quantum systems. That said, what is different about Microsoft's approach? And why is it interesting? Microsoft is attempting to make a quantum computer based on topological superconductors. Topological superconductors, just like regular superconductors, conduct electricity with zero resistance. However, they're interesting primarily because they have the potential to host an exotic type of quantum state, the Majorana zero mode, also known as the Majorana fermion or the Majorana bound state. When you go through the math of quantum mechanics for any other type of qubit, you get multiple states each with a given energy. For topological superconductors, you find something similar. Two states, although they have the same energy, that can be used for computation. However, there is an interesting extra factor that makes them very beneficial for quantum computing. In a normal qubit, when something from the environment interacts with the quantum computer, this messes with the quantum states inside your quantum computer. This leads to a problem known as decoherence, where the qubit loses information to its environment. For Majorana bound states though, this is not the case. These Majoranas are immune to local perturbations. In other words, if an outside system interacts with a topological qubit, that qubit won't decohere. The outside world will basically bounce right off it. But that raises the question, what even are these particles? Well, that is a complicated question. Majorana fermions are a type of particle known as a quasi-particle. This means that they come about due to the interactions of a collection of other particles. Majoranas, in reality, are actually a quantum superposition of other particles. In this case, a Majorana fermion is a special superposition of an electron and a hole. Holes are also quasi-particles, and you can think of them as the absence of an electron. Basically, in a crystal lattice, when an electron moves from one atom to the other, the electron leaves behind a vacancy or hole where the electron was. It turns out that we can treat this hole left by an electron just like a particle itself. The Majorana fermion, then, is a quasi-particle, that is a superposition of an electron, which is a particle, and a hole, which itself is a quasi-particle. This alone wouldn't be interesting though. There's another type of state, an Andrea bound state, that is also a superposition of electrons and holes. No, the defining characteristic of a Majorana fermion is that it's its own antiparticle. Antiparticles make up antimatter, which is just like regular matter we experience in the universe day to day, except all of the particles are reversed. In antimatter, instead of there being electrons, there are positrons. Instead of there being protons, there are antiprotons, etc. Each particle has its own antiparticle. When a particle and its antiparticle come together, they instantaneously annihilate, producing pure energy, released as light and heat. Majorana fermions, however, are their own antiparticle. In other words, if you move two Majoranas into contact with one another, they annihilate, even though they're the exact same particle. There's no other fermion like this as far as we know. To use these Majoranas in a quantum computer, though, it's not enough just to have the states. We would need to be able to do logic. In normal quantum computers, to apply logic gates, which are the operations that we actually do at the hardware level to execute any code that you program, 
we usually apply pulses of lasers or control electronics in order to send a signal to the qubit. The qubit absorbs this pulse like an antenna, which changes its energy state. This is how almost all qubit platforms work nowadays. To do logic gates on a topological quantum computer, you must braid two Majoranas together. What this means is you have to move them around one another. We call this braiding because the topology means that Majoranas effectively have some memory. You can think of it like each particle having a string tied to it. This means that moving one Majorana around another creates a new state different from the start. The kicker though, is that as long as one Majorana moves around another, small changes to the path taken don't matter. In other words, the Majorana doesn't care if it takes a smooth or jagged path. This jagged path could be caused by all sorts of external noise, but that doesn't matter for this particle, because the states that we're computing on don't actually care. To make a qubit out of Majoranas, you need to use four individual Majorana fermions. By braiding these Majoranas in a specific way, you can get two different states known as Dirac modes. Each Dirac mode is made up of two Majoranas. For four Majoranas, we have two Dirac modes. There are two Majorana modes to one Dirac mode. The Dirac modes can either be occupied, one, or unoccupied, zero. This gives four possible states, zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. However, due to the underlying physics of superconductors, during computations, we keep to either zero, zero, and one, one, or zero, one, and one, zero. For simplicity's sake, let's focus on the zero, zero, and one, one. It is these states of the Dirac modes which we map to the logical states in a qubit. 0, 0 is our logical 0 state, and 1, 1 is our logical 1 state. So Microsoft made one of these, right? Well, that's where things get muddy. The field of Majorana research in quantum computing has been plagued by false promises and improperly handled data. There are two branches to this story. The Academic Journal article and the Microsoft press releases, which tell very different stories. Microsoft's recent publication in the journal Nature goes into the specifics of attempting to make these Majoranas into physical systems. Using a nanowire created out of a superconductor, aluminum, interfaced with a semiconductor, indium arsenide. In this paper, they go into the specifics of how to execute a parity measurement, which is one of the ingredients necessary for a qubit based on Majorana fermions. The problem here is that they never actually show that they've created Majoranas. And to their credit, in the paper, they acknowledge this in several places. Even the peer reviewers for the paper explicitly state that the paper is not proof of Majoranas. This is a relatively reasonable way to approach an inconclusive result in a field riddled with skepticism. They make no claim that they have found Majoranas, which they shouldn't because they haven't ruled out all potential contributing factors. There's a chance that they created Majoranas, but they definitely don't measure them selectively. It's hard to even say if the odds are in their favor or not. While the paper was just published in Nature recently, it was actually published with open access on a preprint on the archive in January 2024. So there's been ample time for the scientific community to think about the results. The general consensus seems to be that the science is cool but inconclusive, and definitely not something ready to be made into a processor yet, or even a single qubit. We don't even know for sure that it's possible to create Majoranas yet, let alone make a qubit with braiding gate operations and entanglement. Then there are the press releases. The press releases discuss a quantum processor with several Majorana-based qubits. It's called the Majorana 1 invoking the fact that Microsoft is confident that their processor not only contains Majoranas, but can use them for computation. Unfortunately, these press releases seem to deviate significantly from the intentions of the paper. Quantum computing with Majorana fermions could be a Nobel Prize level achievement. Ever since their theoretical prediction in the 1930s, scientists have looked for ways to realize them in a lab. If the result is genuine, it would be revolutionary on nearly the same level as room temperature superconductors. If Microsoft actually did find Majoranas conclusively since this paper, then their claim that quantum computing is years not decades away is actually reasonable. That said, finding Majoranas is not easy, so that is a very big if. If you found this video interesting and want to learn more about how to actually use a quantum computer yourself, then check out this video that I made on coding a real quantum computer. With that, I've been Lucas, this has been Lucas's Lab, and thanks for watching.